Good. Save it. What time is it? Okay, let's see. We're going to get through all the lecture that we have to do. So when I say you can ask questions, that's when you ask questions. And if there's any disruption, I'm going to ask you to leave. Okay, if I get disrupted, I'm going to ask you to leave. Remember in the syllabus it says that if I'm disrupted and I have to ask you to leave, I have the option of dropping you. Okay? So we're going to get our work done because this also is for other classes. So portion of students who drive to campus is not. Point six. So we already did this hypothesis. In your setup, we have two types. This was an alternate hypothesis. So p is not equal to 0.6. The null is p equals 0.6. So because this is a not equal for the alternate hypothesis, this is a two-tail test. This is a do not reject the null region. This is the reject the null region. Okay, two tail test. The hardest part is to determine your critical values. Okay, so this is a setup. But what they're going to give you, the rest of this, they're going to say that a sample now of, I don't know, let's say 120 college students indicate that 74 drive to campus. Okay, so we're going to use now the 5% level of significance to test this claim. Okay, so now that you know the level of significance, you know what alpha is. It's the sum of the two tails. So that this is 2.5%. This is 2.5 percent, okay? So you're going to look for now on your Z table, 47.5 percent, because if the sum of the tails is 5 percent, what you see here is 95 percent. So half of 95 percent is 47.5 percent, okay? So if you look at your table, 47.5 percent, you're going to work backwards. 
you're looking for 0 0.4750 because the table that I gave you works only for this picture. So if this is 47.5%, working backwards, you're going to get your z-value. So what does it say there? Okay, so these are your critical values. So now you use your sample information. The sample information is stating that they asked 120 college students. The number of successes is 74. So that the sample proportion is going to be 74 over 120. Okay, so what do you get for the sample proportion? 0.621? Can't be a 1? Point. Point 0.61? So it's these sixes together. Let's go to point 0.62. Okay, so that's a 62% sample proportion. It's pretty close to the 60%. So let's see what the test statistic says. The test statistic says that we take the difference with the sample proportion and the true proportion, square root of the true proportion from our hypothesis and its complement divided by n. So when I plug in these values, I get 0.62 minus 0.6. Now p is 0.6. So this is 1 minus p, or 1 minus 0.6. 1 minus 0.6 is 0.4. It's the complement. The sample size is 120. Okay. So that what you enter in your calculator as a test statistic value is going to be 0.62 minus 0.6 divided by square root of 0.6 times 0.4 divided by 120. Parentheses here and here in your calculator. So what do you get as a test statistic value? What is it? Point, point four, five. Anybody second that answer? Okay. So point four five lives on the decision rule. It's close to zero. It's positive, so it's to the right. But the question is, is it smaller than the critical value of one point nine six? So any values between negative 1.96 and positive 1.96, you do not reject the null. The test statistic lives around here of a 0.45 value. So this lives in the do not reject the null region. If we do not reject the null, we accept the null, meaning that the proportion is actually 0.6. Okay. So based on this sample, the sample supports the claim that, or actually counters the claim, the claim is that the true proportion is not 60. The sample indicates that the proportion is. So we are not rejecting the null. So your conclusion would be, do not reject the null. OK, anybody have any questions on this example that we just did? Okay, so the next example I'm going to talk about here we're going to look at the last statement we started the morning with which is the mean cups of copies per day that students drink is at least 0.22. So we're going to, we're going to start with this example and so we already know what the setup is. 
H naught, H1, H naught is mu greater than or equal to 2.2. The opposite of that statement, the opposite of this null, is that mu is less than 2.2. So that this hypothesis setup corresponds to the left tail test. Okay, These are opposites. It's a left tail test. Now, you do need additional information because we're going to have to talk about what alpha is so we can determine the critical value. So the real problem is going to have this statement. It's also going to say things like this. A sample of 12 students indicate a mean Okay, indicate a mean of, let's say, 1.9 cups with a standard deviation of 0 0.7 cups. Okay, we're going to use now the 1% level of significance to test this claim. Okay, so this is the rest of the problem that you would see based on the setup we already have. Now the decision rule, again, this is a left tail test. And how do you know? You're looking at the alternate hypothesis. So the alternate hypothesis indicates this is a left tail. This is the do not reject the null, and this is the reject the null. Okay, so again, the hardest part is going to be to determine the critical value. So your level of significance here is 1%. So alpha is 1%, meaning that there is 1%, 1% of the bell is shaded in the left tail. All of it is in the left tail. There's only one tail here. So here's the deal. This is what you have that's new. If you look at the sample information, the sample information says that the sample size is 12. This is n. The sample mean is 1.9, with the sample standard deviation being 0.7. This is a sample mean, sample standard deviation. Okay, and this is the new part. What do you guys know about the sample size? What do you know about the sample size? This is what? Yes, this is a small sample. So with a small sample, a small sample is a sample that is less than 30. So what do you use when you have a small sample again? The T table. Okay, so you're going to be using the t-table here. And if you remember how to use the t-table, the t-table had two pieces of information. The t-table, for the row, you needed to know what the degree of freedom is. It's n minus 1. So that if the sample size is 12, the degree of freedom is 11. You're going to look for the 11th row in the t-table. Okay, so you're going to work looking for the 11th row in the t-table. Alpha here, remember alpha is your column, and alpha is 1%. So what you're going to look for for alpha is that 1%, but this is where the additional information comes in. For that column, you'll notice on the t-table that it has one tail, two tail. You're going to look for the one tail simply because there is only one tail.